This is the plaintiff, Linda Callahan. She says she purchased a used car from the defendant, and the warranty he sold her was a worthless piece of junk, and she was scammed. That's right, when her car broke down, she had a huge bill she needed to pay out of pocket. The defendant's a crook who hung up on her, and she's here suing him for every penny of the money she now needs to fix the car he unloaded on her. And pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Bob Montaneri. He says the plaintiff purchased two cars from him previously, so he threw in a pro guard warranty because he's a nice guy. When the plaintiff's car broke down, she threw an absolute hissy fit when she discovered the warranty she had didn't cover her repairs. The woman then went on a rampage. She destroyed his office, stormed out, and now here they are. He's accused of claiming something and not delivering. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she purchased the car with a warranty from the defendant, but when it broke down, guess what? He wouldn't honor it. But the defendant says the plaintiff threw a fit in his place and destroyed his office. So he doesn't want anything to do with her. It's the case of getting hot under the hood. All right, Ms. Callahan, you bought your third car from Brooks Auto World, correct? Yes. And part of that, um, when did you buy it? July 25th is when I like- Of what year? Of 2019. Okay, and do you have the paperwork from that purchase? Yes, I do. May I see it? Of course. So this is the warranty, and what warranty did you buy? So the warranty that um, Bob had included with the car was a pro, was a ProGuard 3 warranty for 12 months, or at least until my car hit, like, I believe, like, 15. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why someone marks 90, and then someone else takes a pen, marks 12, and puts one year and circles it. Yeah, so Bob made an error, and he tried to fix it with the pen. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have yeah. Um, when people make an error on a contract, they put their initials next to it or they start over. Yeah, he didn't start over. He didn't put his initials there. He just like, oh, I'm sorry, and he fixed it. And then, you know, we just signed it. I mean... Yeah, but you know how it looks now, right? Yeah, of course. Right. How long was her warranty supposed to be for? One year, 14,500 miles. Which warranty was she supposed to get? Well, I'll explain. When she or anyone comes into my dealership, the Lemon Law warranty is 1,000 miles, 30 days, doesn't really cover so much. And people, when they buy used cars, my lot, I sell cars from 10,000 on down, and it's a used car. So I give everybody, and I don't mean I bill it in the price, I give, I pay. Well, if, if that's the incentive for oh. people to buy, it's kind of building the price, but okay. okay. No money out of her pocket or right. any of my customer's pocket. And so what I do is I give them a ProGuard 3 warranty. There's ProGuard 1 through 5. The higher the number, the more the coverage. But some of the higher numbers, you don't need the coverage because it's not okay, a diesel, but, but it's not a digress. turbo. But you digress. So what did you give to her as part of her deal? What did you... A one-year warranty. One-year warranty, one. ProGuard what? One. Well, why then does she have a piece of paper that only you could give her that says ProGuard 3. Well, if you look at that, judges for 90 days. It's not a it's not Okay, a that's a different three. question than what I'm asking you. Okay. What's marked is, is ProGuard 3, not ProGuard 1. Okay. All right, so explain to me then what you're trying <coughs> to say to me. Every customer that buys a car from us gets a ProGuard 3 90-day warranty. Okay. Everybody gets it. Well then, but, but do you understand that there's a conflict in your own testimony? If everyone gets a ProGuard 3, why are you saying that you that she got a ProGuard 1? Well, they get a ProGuard 3 for 90 days. Okay. She got a ProGuard 1 for 12 months. That okay. warranty Does there she pay cost. for that? Stop a second. Does she pay for that? No. The ProGuard 1 for 12 months, does she pay for that? She did not pay a dime for that warranty. So that, what is it that you included in the deal? A ProGuard 1 for 12 months? Correct. No. And then she also, so she'll get conflicting no. paperwork, one that says no. she had, well, how does she have that? Right. And when, wait, don't talk. Well, how does she have this? Okay. My title clerk, when she bills out a deal, it's automatic, Judge, that she makes a 90-day ProGuard 3 warranty. Every customer of mine gets it. 
when Mrs. Callahan came in to look at her third car from me, she was a little apprehensive because the car Can had... Can you not digress and just answer what I'm asking? I'm I, I, look, this is a contracts case. I see right. a contract for 90 days, and then I see somebody took a pen and wrote one year and 12 months. That's the right. ProGuard 3. Do you have a different contract with their signature that says ProGuard 1 for 12 months? My title clerk made the, the warranty that I believe you ha would have in your hand. Linda picks up the car in the evening. My title clerk is not there. She's part-time. The following day, when all these contracts are paid online, and I have a one-year ProGuard 1 contract unsigned because she picked up the car, and she states that she mailed out a Show copy me the proof the that you gave her a ProGuard 3, too. I guess what you're saying is I gave her both? Because that doesn't make any sense to me that you would pay for both running at the same yeah. time. Judge, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you the best I can. Well, Everybody let me explain to you what my problem is. Here's what my problem is. You aren't my first rodeo. I have cases every day against used car companies. Mm -hmm. Some used car companies are providing a service that where people wouldn't be driving if it weren't for the used car company because she can't go to Lexus and buy a car. She buys her cars used from you. Okay, so that's marvelous. So some used car companies are fantastic and some aren't. Some do this. Some tell the customer, buy the car, you're getting a great warranty. And then they turn around, they don't even forward the money to the warranty company. Exactly and right. then the customer doesn't get a warranty. Mm -hmm. Or some are careless and make a mistake and mark ProGuard 1 instead of ProGuard 3 when that's what they're supposed to be giving them because that's what I have a signature saying she's gonna get. Or some are really good and made a mistake and it's the warranties company's fault. Or that side is greedy and they want something covered they're not supposed to get covered. I'm trying to figure out which category this case falls into. So I have a very specific question. I know exactly where I'm going because I've been doing this a long, long time. So I am asking you the following question. This customer goes in there, you make a sale. Your answer to me is, Judge, everybody automatically gets 90 days on ProGuard 3. So that's what we gave her. That's why her signature is on there. But now you're telling me that at the same time that this is going on, there's another one that she bought for 12 months in ProGuard 1. So that raises all kinds of questions in my head. Like, why would you ever pay for two warranties to run at the same time? One. Two. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Two, <laughs> I want to know that you actually paid for something. So I want to see the proof of whatever you sent that company. I want to see if you're trying to feed me the following. Mm -hmm. Oh, judge, I automatically give everybody this warranty, and then I also gave her this warranty that runs at the same. I want to see how out of your pocket you paid for a ProGuard 3 for 90 days and a ProGuard 1 for a year. If that's what you're telling me happened, then prove it to me. Okay, I am telling you that. Dad Good. Can't. Now prove it to me. Right. Don't talk. I don't want to see. I don't want to hear flapping gums. I want the proof. So show me the proof that you paid for both warranties. I did not pay for her first warranty because we gave her the twelve month, ninety day. Oh, and, so and then this is what happened. Yeah. You are not someone that automatically gave her a ninety day warranty. You are somebody that accidentally gave her one, because she has the paperwork. Then you didn't mean to give that to her. How, did you ever give her the one you meant to give to her? You didn't even yeah. give her. Mm -mm. How did you Contract give it to right her? Mm -mm. How did you, stop? How did you give it to her? The following day, when my title clerk came in, we, she printed up a one-year contract. Is her signature it on, on it? No, she never came in. Okay, you do know that we have fax machines, scanners. Oh it, well, we. Right. We like you wouldn't it. be here had had you done that and yeah. not given out this. Yeah. Why did you give out this if you never intended yeah. for her to have the the ProGuard three? You know. Judge, it's very important. A three-month ProGuard 3 cost me $220. A one-year ProGuard 1 cost me $345. It's not like I'm beating her. Okay. This thing cost 50% more because I told her I'd give her a year. Right, You're making it sound like she's not getting what I promised no, her. What I, I no, did. no, no. Wait, hold on. The okay. crux is exactly the last thing you said. I'm making it sound like she didn't get what she bargained for. 
the problem that we're ha listen to me. Oh, the I'm problem that well. we're having is that you gave her anything with the word ProGuard 3 on it. And it's the only thing she got. The only thing she got was ProGuard 3 90 days with that signature. Okay? Right. So I hear what you are saying. Do you understand that that causes you this problem? This carelessness in the paperwork is causing you this problem. Why would you release this paper to her with 90 days <coughs> and her signature? If she picks up, when does she sign this? You're blaming it on the clerk not being there. But this gets written up and she signs it. So how did she sign it? When she bills the car out for delivery. Who's she? My title clerk. Okay. Uh, she prints a warranty. If a car, some cars aren't even eligible. Sir, for listen it. to so the question. Listen to the question. Sure. When does her signature get on there? Physically when describe what's going on when she signs it. When she's sitting there, there's probably more than 20 documents that she has to sign. Who's giving her the documents? Me. Ah. Oh. So you're the guy who handed her a piece of paper to sign telling I her did. that she had PG-3. Yeah, I For did. 90 days. Yes. Okay. But then she didn't have PG-3 for 90 days. That's correct. Okay. So you screwed up. I got it now. All right. And then you gave her what you say you told her you would give her, which is PG-1. Correct. Okay. Now, do, do you have anything that says what a ProGuard 3 covers versus what a ProGuard 1 covers? Um, yeah, if you look on the ProGuard warranty paper, like literally the next page, it breaks down one and it breaks down two. Judge, I have their brochure. It's much easier to read than the contract. Thank you. There is your one, two, three. If I were to contact the warranty company, what would they say you purchased? Just the one-year warranty ProGuard 1? Correct. Okay. Have you ever, by the way, had this um, service contract? You bought it on your prior cars? Um, no, I didn't. I actually purchased two other cars from him, and the cars that I purchased, they didn't have as high as mileage as the truck had. Well, the, the 2008 Ford had, so that's why he gave me the so-called warranty anyway. And, and so tell me the discussion that, according to you, takes place between these two parties regarding the warranty. Does he actually use the words PG-3 or PG-1 or no? He, he actually used the words PG-3. Like, um... Honestly, the clerk was there the whole time. She sits behind him, so she was there the whole time. She was there while he was explaining it to me and my family. Is there any came. documentation on the PG-1 for a year that's signed by her? The answer is no, right? Um, Correct. I didn't even know I had PG-1 until my car broke down, and I called the, P the um, pro guard people to see, like, you know, why my car not getting covered, because the pet boys that I took my car to, they told me, like, nothing couldn't get covered. I'm like, why I got this warranty? So I just called. They said, well, your warranty people saying you're not covered. So I called the um, warranty when people. When did you call the warranty? Um, I called the warranty people maybe, like, uh, December, I want to say, like, December 13th, Okay, which maybe. is well beyond the 90 days that you have a right to think this, because you can't just doctor up a contract and say, well, by the way, let me just show you this. Is that your circling and your writing of one year? Is that what you're saying, that he did that? Yes, he did do that, because he told me I Hold had on. it. Does that look like your handwriting? I, I can't confirm it. It's my handwriting. Can you not. confirm I mean, it's, it's not? It's a circle, and it says one year. My signature's not on here at all. No, I know, because there's no place for your signature. I'm just asking you, because well, like I would... Books Whose signature is there? It's not a signature, it's a stamp. This is all right, done right. online. So when you're, no, but right. Well, what's done on, that paper's not done online. The ordering of the warranty is done online. Correct. What I'm asking you here, it just sounds like, like maybe you made a mistake, but there's a mistake she relied on. So what I'm trying to understand here is, because I would know if I, if, if I circled something and I wrote something down, I recognize my handwriting. I'd like you to take a look and tell me if that's your handwriting. I Judge, it's a circle. I can't Not tell. Not the circle, the handwriting that says one year. Do you see where it is, or do you want my bailiff to point to Oh, you? no, I can see it fine. I mean, it's a box checked. You're asking no, me, did I check the I box? I am not. Will my bailiff please point to the words one year? OK. Does that look like your handwriting? No. OK. No. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff bought a car from the defendant with a warranty, broke down, and she says you won't honor it. And there's a confusion because she thinks she's under a one-year warranty. He says it's only 90 days because of some mess up with the paperwork. Let's go back into the courtroom. So we have a couple things going on here. Mm -hmm. When someone, if you see a mistake like this, which you claim you saw and then he changed it and all that, if you don't want it to look like you doctored something up, mm -hmm. then initials need to go on the side. Have you ever seen that in um, a contract? 
where yeah. people sign because there's a change and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what you, or you need to say, wait, 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 wait. This isn't what we talked about. It says 90 days. Yeah, actually, that's what I did say. And then that's why he circled Watch this. Did you say, did she say that to you? No. Okay. See, but do you see how, <laughs> right. So either he's a liar. Yeah. Or you're a liar. No. You, you see, and then when you go to court, how long have I known you? Just met you. Right. How long have I known him? <laughs> So if someone's going to change a contract, you would never, and I don't think, I have to be honest with you. I'm not 100% convinced that, that you are naive enough to accept something that's marked wrong with just a handwriting on it. So we know you hand her this when she's buying the car. I'm concerned that this may be your handwriting that says one year, because A, she testifies it is, but... No, no, B, stop talking. You don't hear me in the middle of a sentence. But B, the E's are like a three backwards. And when I look at the document that you said, yes, I filled that out, your E's are like a three backwards. Not everybody does that, but lots of people do that. The R doesn't completely hook sometimes in this document. Sometimes it does, but there's several R's that aren't completely hooked. I don't know. I think that you know the real question here is who does the tie go to, you know? Because when there's a discrepancy in a contract is called against the drafter, you know what I'm saying? I know for a fact that you handed her this document. Do you, ha you say that the only document with her signature is this one? Well, Do I have, no, there's plenty others. Okay, here's what I want. I want anything in your possession that says ProGuard. There's nothing, in fact, you have a copy of the sales order there's no, it, there's a whole list of things that are on the car, like when she drove the car, the hatch wouldn't latch, and okay, there's a number of Okay, but don't digress items. again. What, what, are, what are you trying to say? Just get to okay. the point. What yeah, I'm what? trying to say is I gave her, there wouldn't be a, a contract on the sales order. I gave her the one-year warranty. Did you tell her gave. that? Listen to me. Did you tell her that, that you would be including a one-year warranty before she bought the car? I, I did because okay, she Okay, then please, the you miles. need to understand that regardless of the fact that if somebody throws in something and that is an incentive for me to buy something, you don't get to wriggle out of it later, okay? If you got me to buy the car by telling me I'm going to give you a warranty, then you don't get to say, but I gave her the warranty, so now I don't have to give it to her. No, that's not how it works. The real question is, what warranty did you two negotiate? So I don't know. So let's put to aside the 90-day. Your real problems happen five months later. What mm -hmm. happens five months later? So um, in December, I'm just like regularly coming from work. My car overheats, and it's just like overheating, smoking, and everything. So I'm like, okay, it automatically shut off on I me mean, once it overheated. So I'm like, okay, something wrong with the car. So, you know, I try to like do my way of trying to fix it. Maybe it need oil, maybe it need this, but it didn't need none of that. So I mean, it still didn't start up, like even when I was putting the fuse in it. So I just like, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I knew I had a warranty. So I just was like, let me call my warranty and see what we can do. So they just started off by saying, you know, just take it to a, um, just take it to one of our shops so we could just get it looked at. So I'm like, okay, and that's what I did. I took it to the Pet Boys. They uh, looked at it. They I told have a me question for you. Is this your signature on the bottom of this? Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Then they just told me that I had, like, they, then they told me what was all wrong with my um, vehicle. Like, I had a water pump problem. They told me, like, you know, we go through yes. them. Okay, hand that back it, to them. It's uh -huh. my warrant. It's they my say signature. we go through, we go through. Um, who fills out, just a second, who fills out the top part? I fill that all okay, out completely. Go ahead. Go on. So then they called, they called the warranty, and the warranty people told me that, told them that I wasn't covered. So I got the call back saying that um, I okay, wasn't Okay, you're telling me so much more than I need to hear. Can you just oh, answer sorry. the following question for mm -hmm. me? Have you fixed the car? No. What are you doing? You've spent $1,300 in car rental? Instead uh, of just paying $1,900 and fixing the car and then suing them for the $1,900? I'm uh, sorry, I don't have $1,900 to just... Well, you, apparently you have $1,300 because according to you, you've spent that on car rental. Do you yeah. have proof that you've paid that on car rental? Yeah, I do. Um, I pay rental weekly, so I just was... I get paid weekly, so I was just getting a rental. I mean... Show so me I the was, paperwork for your car rental. And that's the rental papers. So I spent a total of $1,300, maybe $1,400 on a rental car. Um... I honestly, I was just like. Do you have any document that says that you have a ProGuard 3 for a year other than this one? 
Um, I have witness statements that was there with me the day that I yeah, went. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Okay, yeah, I have two. Two of my um, family members came with me. Who said what? My my mom came with me and my uh, friend, just like my coworker that I work with, he came with me and they basically was there when Bob was explaining um, like what I had. He, they was there when I got in the car and test drove it the same day. And what do they um, say he said? So basically they saying the same thing, that he uh, broke down the warranty to us. He broke down the ProGuard 3 warranty to us. You know, I made the little several complaints about the um, mileage being higher than he told me, the pet hair, the handle, and stuff like that. Um, honestly, they even said that he made the error and he corrected it, too. So I wasn't the only person that's saying that he made that error and he corrected it. So. And who are these people? Who is? That's my mother. I got a note from your mother. I mean, that's the thing. You don't go with strangers to yeah, buy the car. You go with, you know, people you know. So, yeah. Were there people with her when she bought, purchased the car? No. <clears throat> I thought we were telling the truth. I'm trying to imagine if there are any relatives that I could go with to a car purchase that would remember with this specificity exactly what my warranty would cover. Yeah, so the friend, he actually um, owned his own little car lot. So that's why I really brought him there. Why didn't you buy it from him? Because he didn't have nothing good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like driving in fancy cars, and he didn't have nothing fancy for me. The total purchase price of the car is 7500 mm -hmm. And then plus financing, or no? No, I think... Did you finance it or no? Yeah, I financed it. On your own or through them? No, through Bob. Okay. So here's what we know. We know that when you're sitting there buying this car and signing paperwork, he hands you a document that says PG3. Yes. We also know for a fact that that same document, when it came out of the printer, said 90 days. Correct. The part that is in question is that it now also has a mark that says 12 months and then it says one year next to it. And so what thinking minds want to know is did you write that or did he write that? Yeah. That's not an invitation to speak. That's what thinking minds want to know because if you wrote it, then that should count against you because A, you'd be lying to me um, and B, you know, it, it's kind of weird that, this, that the initials aren't there. That's what's done, but maybe you don't know that. I don't know. If he wrote it, then he's trying to get you to buy a car by talking about how great a warranty is, and then he's saving himself some bucks by only throwing in not the great one, but the one that wouldn't cover everything that happened to you. I now know that everything that happened to her would have been covered had he bought the three for a year. But what he bought was the one for a year. Now, his answer to me is, but I'm throwing that in anyway, so it doesn't cost her anything, so she's not entitled to rely on that. No. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, then you got to do it. If that is part of their inducing them to spend $7,500 plus, you know, whatever you're spending on financing that could probably potentially double that. So the question is then, what did you tell her that day? What was she going to get? She has affidavits from two people who are close to her, obviously, because they're there buying a car with her, who claim to have all kinds of intimate knowledge about exactly what it is. I don't know if they had that intimate knowledge or not, or if you know they know what the problem is, so they're beefing it up so she could make her case sound great. I do know this. This isn't a case where your side is saying, what are you talking about? She only had a 90-day warranty. And then she marks 12 months and she marks a year. This is a case where your side is agreeing she's supposed to have a year. And this accidentally was given to her. But I didn't write one year and correct the 90 days, Judge. I show you the handwriting. You say, I can't say that. I can't tell you if that's my handwriting. I got to tell you. I would know if something was my handwriting or not. I would know. I look at the E's, which are a backwards three, which is kind of unique, and I have documents with her handwriting where her E's aren't like that. I do have a document with your handwriting where your E's are. So this isn't a criminal case where she has to prove this beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. This is a civil case where she has to prove to me by a preponderance of the evidence that she was told she had 
a PG-3, which a document from you gives her, and a year-long deal, which a document, not only your testimony, but this writing gives her. But even your own testimony says, oh yeah, it was gonna be for a year. So the rules of construction in the law say that any ambiguity is to be construed against the drafter. That means the people who are putting the contract together. I am finding in her favor, and I am ordering you to pay her both the car rental and the car repairs for a total of $3,301.56. Now, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to know if I could still get my uh, warranty for Absolutely. Her I am you. ruling in this case that what you were sold is the better warranty. Now, I can only rule on what's in front of me. So I have word to the wise here. It would behoove you to purchase the better warranty for her and wash your hands of this. Because if something else goes wrong, and it will, of course. if you don't have the better warranty, she's just gonna sue you again. And then she's gonna show that judge the ruling in this case. What you do is up to you. I can't monitor you when you leave this courtroom, but my advice to you is to pay the difference and wash your hands of this problem. And my advice to you is if another problem arises and it's not covered for you by the warranty company, you can then sue him again and show that judge this. But I can't rule on the future. You got yeah. it? Thank All you. All right, folks, good luck. Take care. Love you, bro. Stick around because Doug's gonna be in the hallway with the litigants. So after hearing the testimony, the judge finds for the plaintiff and awards her the car repairs and the rental car, over 3,300 bucks. You at one point didn't feel the judge understood what you were trying to say, but she explained it in detail. Yeah. You think yeah. she does now? Uh, well, listen, I have a different opinion, but I've got to respect the judge. And life goes on. She gets paid. Hopefully she'll have wonderful luck with the car. Okay, and all right. Well, I think you'd be a little more careful next time with your paperwork, okay? It would clarify the case. Okay. Right? Thank I mean, you. I think it would. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Good enough. You must sign a few documents. All right, Ms. Callahan. I think you're happy. Of course. I'm very happy. I just want my car fixed. You know, I'm tired of paying money on rentals. Do not go to a used dealership unless you know all the ins and the outs. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. you must sign a few documents. And Harvey. Well, you know, you can make a change to a contract, that's no problem, but when you do, whether you're the business person or the customer, you should always have both parties initial it next to it so there's no misunderstanding.